This is a scam we've been hearing a lot about lately. In addition to people reaching out to us saying this happened to them, we mentioned it in a video recently and we got a couple more comments saying that it just happened to them. Mm -hmm. So, and, so sad. And that- I, I couldn't believe actually, once we mentioned that, how many other people were coming forward with their stories. And that is flying into the Cancun airport and getting extorted by the customs officials mm -hmm. for uh, being over the limit. Like it, it seems like it's primarily people who have cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're allowed something like 10 uh, uh, packages or something? In the most recent document I've seen, it said you're allowed 10 packs to packs, bring Packs, that's what they're called. <laughs> to bring into the country. <laughs> and what happens is they have more than what's allowed and then they're brought into this back room and then they're like, pay me 500 or 1,000 US dollars. 1,500 Otherwise you're crazy. not gonna be allowed into the country. Uh -huh. So it's or a- Or we'll take you off to jail for bringing this in illegally or it, not declaring it or something. It's a really crap happy position to be in and a horrible way to start your Mexico vacation. Uh -huh. So it's definitely something you want to avoid. Um, a suggestion that someone had was to print out the a sheet that says exactly what you're allowed to have or the taxes that you're required to pay. So they know that you know exactly what your laws are, what the laws are, what your rights are. The last time we made a video about scams in this area, it ended up, the video ended up getting picked up by a news outlet, the State News of Quintana Roo. And I really really hope this does as well because mm -hmm. this is what's going to get these customs officials to stop scamming people. Because like you said, that has got to be like the absolute worst thing, the worst case scenario. Sometimes this is people's first steps into the country. Their first steps are in the Cancun airport and then one of the first experiences they have are a customs agent trying to extort money out of them. Like that's going to make people never want to come back to Mexico again. And if mm -hmm. it isn't clear already, we want people to come to Mexico and find out how awesome uh -huh. it is and why we like it, but we don't want them to have these experiences that are going to make them want to run never for the hills and again. never look back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are a slew of scams that revolve around basically paying for a service and then not actually receiving it or only having it partially completed or partially done. And yeah. then, yeah. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then on the other hand, there is Ha rendering a service or eating the thing and then getting scammed into paying more money afterwards because you've already eaten the hamburger or the tacos or whatever so then you kind of have to pay whatever price even if they are trying to gringo praise you or gouge you or whatever the case may be. So one example of this is we were living in Ajijic and the owners of the house came back and when they started living there someone knocked on their door one day and this guy's like hey I'll paint this wall for you uh, for 300 pesos or 600 pesos or whatever it was and then they paid them and then the guy was never to be seen again yeah so, he probably went oh let me go grab the paint and i'll be right back and then he was never back again never seen or heard from we asked on our facebook group about scams that you guys have experienced and there was a comment about hair braiding she says i was with a friend on the beach in mazatlan where two girls were offering to braid hair my friend agreed on their price and she paid them but after only half her hair was done they demanded more money to finish and even started to walk away she had no choice but to pay them more she ended up paying more than double what they had originally charged so that's like the perfect example of paying for the service and then they are in a power position to like bully you out of some more money it's like well you don't want half your hair braided you look ridiculous like you need to pay me more so what what could you even do in a situation like this my first instinct is to like maybe get your phone out and take a picture of them and say i'm going to the police but i i almost think like in a situation like that you don't want to make waves you don't want to make a big deal over hair braids kind of thing or yeah. like a small situation similar to that so but what you, would you guys do what would you do in that situation the, the one thing i can think of if i really want to make waves and really want to let it be known that this woman's a scam artist is I take a photo of them and then write up a little thing in Microsoft Word with their photo saying this person's a scam artist telling the story in Spanish and then post it all over the city. You could tell Jordan's been burned by hair braiding before. <laughs> you were like, I will post it all over the city. I feel like that's pretty extreme, but I, I also think it's, probably it's not pretty do it shady. Again. <laughs> I think it's pretty shady that someone would do this in the first place. And on this whole list, you guys, we're not trying to say that like everyone is out to get you. I know we're gonna get comments like, oh, you're making it seem like Mexico is a shithole or Mexicans are evil. And like some people are just like anywhere in the world. We're just hoping to share these things so that you don't fall, 
you don't become a victim to them and put your get, get yourself in a situation like this yeah, if we, it can be avoided. We've made like 250 videos about Mexico. Talking about three, how much we love Mexico. Three of them have been about scams. <laughs> so so don't go tell it us that we're just talking shit about the country. We ain't. <laughs> Another example of this, we have some friends who live in Ahihik and they've built several Airbnbs and they had some problems when they were building them with contractors. Yeah, so essentially they entered into a contractual construction agreement. It's like contractual, contractual, it's tongue twister. <laughs> and they paid for the work to be done and in some cases the materials were not all delivered and the work was not completed. Once again, to avoid this, what do you do? Maybe get local recommendations from other people who've had good experiences, mm -hmm. uh, use someone who has tight ties with the community. That's something our current... <laughs> Mosquito! That's something our current landlord said that he brought out this guy to install a curtain, like a curtain rod for us. And, and something else. And he said he always looks for someone who's local, born and raised locally, so that it's like they have a little bit more accountability to the community and they're not just trying to like get in there, get out and like get your money. And he has extensive, him and his wife have extensive experience, like decades of managing properties and uh, dealing with upgrades and stuff and the, I think it's I think pretty good advice, good advice though. It's, it's solid logic. It's not some like fly-by-night person that's just coming in, in and out and boom, bam, gone. Mm -hmm. Beam, bam, boom, bam, boo, boo, boop. <laughs> <laughs> this next scam is going to be a shock to some people when they get back home and look at their bank statements, but that is that sometimes people will charge your credit card for US dollars when you were thinking you were paying pesos. So for instance, you buy some artesania piece of jewelry and it's supposed to be 400 pesos, they actually charge you for dollars so in this case it's good to have a mobile app that you can check the charge as soon as it happens and also make sure to get a receipt and it'll say MXN or pesos on it so you know it's not in US dollars or at least you have some proof and recourse for your bank later another scam that you'll face a lot if you're traveling throughout Mexico is getting incorrect change. And no, this is not a scam every time because we've gotten more change than we were supposed to at times and obviously that's not a scam. <laughs> it's, ju it's just an honest mistake and honest mistakes happen both ways. I think this is the most common scam that's happened to us across the country. It's happened to us at toll booths, at restaurants, with taxi drivers, at the grocery store. And like Jordan said, it's not always a scam. Sometimes it's an honest mistake, but since it's happened so many times and so frequently, it's something that just always check your change. Know what changers supposed to get back, count it carefully and like don't leave the situation until you know you've gotten the right stuff back. But this makes it sound like this happens all the time and while it is common, still 99% of our purchases we get the correct change. Right, I'm, so. just, I'm just meaning to imply that it's happened all across the country, it's not just isolated in one area or uh -huh. anything, and it has happened freq frequently enough that it gets the designation of the most common scam, scam that we've <laughs> encountered. One way that we keep ourselves safe online when we're hooking up to public Wi-Fi and doing banking and things like that is that we have a VPN. This is something we recommend to anyone for a variety of reasons, but one is it helps keep your data safe because you're hooking up to a network that encrypts your data. So hackers, someone who's posing as like free public Wi-Fi can't swipe all of your data and get your bank or card information and passwords and things like that. If you would like to check out a VPN, you can go to tangerinevpn.com. That link takes you right to our most recommended one. Because we're one of the top affiliates for this company, we were able to negotiate with them and get you guys an additional 10% off any purchase using the code tangerine. So again, that's tangerinevpn.com. Use the code tangerine at checkout for an additional 10%. And if you decide to make a purchase through our link, we get a portion of that sale which helps us continue making videos just like this one. This is a big one to watch out for that happens a lot in this Riviera Maya area. And that is you're out and about and some vendor is like, oh hey, I know you from the resort. But in reality, they don't actually know you and they've never seen you before in their life. They just saw that you have a resort wristband so they know you're a tourist. And that's how they build trust and are able to price gouge you or sell you something more easily. In this case, they're starting the interaction out by lying to you so you can assume you're dealing with a dishonest person. Okay, this next scam has got to be one of the most common that I've ever heard of in Puerto Morelos specifically, and I do know that this is one that happens all over the world. 
but we're mentioning it since in our very sweet, charming beach town that not very many scams happen, this one does. Specifically at the beach, no, I'm sorry, at the Highway Shidrawi grocery store. Outside there's a scam where someone will spill ketchup or mustard or some type of thing on you and then quickly be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, let me help you clean this up. And while you leave your purse or your bags or whatever in the cart, the person that's helping you out has an accomplice that comes and steals stuff or well, your phone. It's actually or... been someone with kids and the kids, the kids steal it. It's even worse. Oh gosh, oh gosh, it's so sunny. If anyone ever tries to distract you by saying you have bird poop on you or ketchup or whatever, be aware that there's a good chance they're probably trying to steal something from you, whether it's a pickpocket situation or something like that. All right, so let's talk about scams surrounding taxis. It is probably no secret to most people that taxi drivers are gonna scam you no matter where you are in the world. We've experienced this in every country we've ever visited, but what are some of the ones that people might wanna watch out for in Mexico specifically? Yeah, so one is being price gouged. In the various cities throughout Mexico, most of the taxis are run by taxi syndicates, and these taxi syndicates have set prices that they're supposed to charge you from one zone to another. And especially if you come to a tourist town, you're probably going to get gouged almost every single time if you don't know these mm -hmm. what the set prices are here. I think we're pretty fortunate here where we live in Puerto Morelos that if we ask a taxi what the price is to a certain location, 90% of the time or more, they're going to give us the real price. The honest price, but that's not the case elsewhere. So what can you do? You can ask them for that price sheet to see what it should cost from one point to the next. Hmm. Um, I personally think a good way to go about it is to clarify and state the price before you even get in. Some people, like we were talking about before, some uh -huh. people might say, oh, well, that, that that's more likely to get you gouged or scammed because then they know that you don't really know what it is yeah, or something like that. They'll say, no, you should know the price. But while that might be good advice in, my mosquito here. While that, while that might be good advice in a popular tourist town like Playa del Carmen or something, I don't think it's realistic if you're traveling around Mexico like we are and going to all of these different cities. Like just pick some random city and to say, oh yeah, just know the price from every zone to the other every zone. We, like, we do often though ask our Airbnb host or our host wherever, like oh, what, yeah. what should the price be from the airport to here so we know when we ask the price. I just personally prefer to clarify the price ahead of time because then it's totally understood by everyone involved that this is the price and this is what we're paying because uh -huh. another scam is that you get to the end the service has therefore been rendered you're getting out and then all of a sudden they're like no it's a hundred US dollars when you anticipate it being like 200 pesos or ten dollars so uh -huh. that, that's the way that we like to go about it but just be aware that this is something that happens and you should just have your guard up even more when it comes to taxi drivers because of all the scams surrounding taxis this is why we use uber whenever it's available mm -hmm. and it's been available in about half of the cities we've been to in Mexico but in this whole region the taxi drivers actually basically like kick them out violently violently kicked out the uber drivers they would order an uber and wait for it to get there and beat up the driver like it was kind of insane yeah. so that it doesn't exist in this area and unfortunately you have to employ some like extra tactics to try to make sure you don't get scammed since we're here eating lunch right now we wanted to share with you some of the scams and tourist traps that can kind of happen to you when you're at a restaurant. And one of those is having things added onto your bill that you didn't consume. This is something that can be an honest mistake, and I'm sure it does happen sometimes where they accidentally put something on there or put something on from someone else's tab onto ours accidentally. But we went to Playa del Carmen a while back, and literally 75% of the restaurants we went to had something on the bill that we didn't order. So when it's happening three out of four times, you know that's not an accident, that's a scam. Another thing that can happen at a restaurant is that the price shows up differently on the bill than it was listed on the menu, and in Mexico that's illegal. They have to advertise the price on the menu of what they're going to charge you, and that price includes tax. You might see on the bill later that tax is on a separate line that says IBA, but the total should be what it says on the menu. Yeah, and if it is a different price on the bill than what it was on the menu, this isn't necessarily a scam. It, it could be, but it could also be that they just haven't updated all of their menus and you got an old menu. We've seen that happen quite a few times. So again, sometimes this is an honest mistake as well. That said, they are required to show
show you the accurate prices. So even if you do get an old menu and then it has higher prices on the bill, you can still contest it because they're required to show you the price that it's actually that they're actually going to charge you. Another thing that you might see, especially in this region in the state of Quintana Roo, is that you'll get your change back from your bill, but it includes their suggested tip that they've already taken out of it. Oftentimes you'll see this happen when they don't return the receipt, so you have no way to check it if you weren't really paying attention. So what they're hoping for is that you'll double tip on top of the tip that they already took out, which is 100% illegal, so that's why we always look as, like pay a special uh, pay special attention to the bill and what type of change we're getting back so we never get short change like this or double tip. Something else to really watch out for when you're at a restaurant is if you're paying with a card, almost always they're going to bring a card reader to you. Never let your card out of sight. If they do take your card away, be very, very wary about what's very, very wary. <laughs> <laughs> about what's going on there because that's highly unusual. There are times though that if you want to pay with a card you have to go to the cashier and if you don't understand that that's what they're saying they might legitimately take your card at a time like that and bring it to the cashier themselves because you didn't understand. If there's malicious intent here the scam is that they want to get your card away from you so they can write down the number or something like that or clone it or make a purchase without you realizing it so that's why you should always have that in your site and just the, the red flag should go up if they take it away because that's just not usual in Mexico for payment. I got camarones al ajillo, uh, shrimp with ajillo uh, pepper. These are perhaps the most delicious shrimp I've tried in Mexico so far. These are amazing. And I got pollo asado and it was 105 pesos. My plate is excellent as well. I have nothing but great things to say about this place, El Serape Mexicano. If you're looking for an authentic Mexican dining experience that isn't a taco stand in Puerto Morelos, I think this is as close as you get. This is really authentic, really tasty Mexican food and at reasonable prices with air conditioning and Wi-Fi and all that good stuff. And the manager, David, he speaks really good English as well. Another scam that you'll want to look out for is people trying to sort of bully you or persuade you into giving a tip where it isn't culturally acceptable. And of course, there are lots of situations where it is, like when a musician comes and plays music for the restaurant or tipping the baggers at a grocery store or, you know, tipping for your food, something like that. But uh, one example is cab drivers. It's not really expected that you give them a tip, although of course you're more than welcome to if they help you with your groceries, your luggage or something, but we were personally victim to this and the cab driver was not backing down. We gave him something like 150 pesos, even though that was in tip. in tip, even though that was way more than necessary, and he was demanding more and more and more, and we didn't end up giving any to him. This next scam is that sometimes people will claim that they have precious metals or stones, like they have gold or silver or rubies or whatever the case may be, and they're trying to pass it off as real and charge a boatload for it, when in reality it's not. You might be thinking, oh, like you do the conversion pesos to your currency, well, this is actually a pretty good deal, but that's probably because it's not authentic, it's not a real deal, it's a synthetic or low quality knockoff. So if you're going to buy these things, buy them because you like the way they look, or maybe it is a good deal for whatever it is, but don't buy them because you think they have a high resale value or it's really valuable. And this really applies when you're coming to tourist towns. Like we bought a silver ring in Oaxaca that came from a mountain town where they actually mine silver. So in that case, you're probably getting the real deal, but if you're coming to Cancun or Playa del Carmen and they're trying to sell you on a gold or silver ring or something like that, you're probably not getting the real deal. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to this point. It is not over yet, but if you're liking it so far, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel because we put out other videos about our life in Mexico and traveling through the country, lots of tips and advice for living here and loving it, and also our guilty pleasure, Vegas. <laughs> All right, so you're coming to Mexico and you're looking to rent a place longer term. Something you really need to watch out for is this. This 
it is that sometimes people will claim that they own the property, they will get your rent and your deposit and everything else, they don't actually own the property, and one of two things can happen, one of two main things. One is they just pocket the money and you don't actually get to stay there, or they know of the place and you do end up getting to stay there. The owners come back eventually and, and find like, out that you're- Why the hell are you living like, in my why house? why are you living here? And then you're in a whole world of other trouble. So I'm not totally sure all the ways that you can get around this other than like having a contract, an official contract. But I mean, how do uh, you prove that someone owns a property? Well, one, one way you could get around this is by dealing with someone with ties to the community, like a realtor. Mm -hmm. If you're going through a realtor, you know they have probably done the proper things to make sure that the person renting it out actually owns it. But we've heard of this happening many, many times, so this mm -hmm. is not a rare scam at all. Mm -hmm. So it's something you definitely need to watch out for. And another scam we're gonna talk about is an Airbnb scam. Airbnb is like what we almost exclusively use for mm -hmm. finding rentals throughout Mexico. We do love Airbnb. However, there have been many times where someone posts deceptive looking pictures or they mislead you into saying there's features that it doesn't have. It's relatively common to the point that we actually made a video on this, mm -hmm. how to avoid an Airbnb rental nightmare by combing through the listing a little bit more thoroughly and looking for these red flags. All right, the next category of scams is gas. And no, I'm not talking about the smelly symphony generally coming out of Jordan and Laska. Excuse me? <laughs> In a recent video, we told you there's a million and one ways to get scammed while you're getting gas, and we thought long and hard about all the ways, and we came up with five. There are uh, there are obviously more than five, but we, we could literally make a video series on how you could get scammed at the gas pump, so we're going to tell you about the big ones. First thing you're going to want to look out for is that the pump is zeroed out, and we recommend telling them a specific amount of gas, because one way that they can scam you is by putting the gas pump in, not pumping any gas, and then just trying charging you for what the last person paid. So say they filled up 439 pesos, they tell you, okay, 439, you pay that, you leave, and you realize you didn't actually get any gas. So if you tell them the amount that you want and make sure to look at that pump that it goes to zero before they start pumping, then that's how you know you're not going to get scammed in that way, in that way. <laughs> Another scam that comes when they don't zero out the pump is they might still pump gas into your car but it will be adding on to what the last person already paid. So let's say the last person paid 300 pesos worth of gas and they pump 400 more pesos into your car and then they charge you 700 and then pocket the difference. They pocket the 300. And although this is the most common, we have to bring it up anyway. When you go to pay, you hand them a bill, say it's a 500 peso bill and they distract you and they switch it out for a 20 since the new 500s look almost identical to the 20s or you give them a 500 and they say, oh, you gave me a 50 and so then you're like, oh, maybe maybe I did give them the wrong bill and then they just stole that money from you essentially you're having to pay even more on top of that. This is a brand new scam to me, one I recently heard about. They're getting crafty with this. You'll ask them to fill up the tank and then they'll put 550 pesos or whatever the number is, whatever fills up your tank worth of gas. And then they'll have some people distract you. Maybe one person is washing your window so you can't see what the other person is doing at the pump. And then the person will type into the pump 900 pesos. So they have 900 written on there instead of the 550 that it actually costs and then they'll pocket the difference. This last gas scam is very common and it comes when you pay with card. What happens is they'll run the card, the transaction will go through, but they'll tell you it didn't and then they'll want you to pay cash. So then you pay cash, and then you just pay twice, they pocket all the cash you just paid them. Mm -hmm. We actually heard about someone who this happened to and they got out of this. They were actually able to have their bank refund that money to them because they had the thought to request a receipt for the cash payment since they were filling up a motorhome or a, an RV and it was so much that they wanted a receipt for that. So then they were able to prove, look, we have this receipt for the cash we paid. They said that this didn't go through, but otherwise you would be SOL. The bank's not gonna do anything for you because there's no proof that you didn't pay that. You ran that charge. In this video that we're going to link right here, we tell you a couple simple steps you can take that will help you avoid every single gas scam that we mentioned and get you out of here unscathed every time. 
although we told you about all these scams here, there are plenty of honest people who work at these gas stations. And to help the honest ones make a living, if they're nice, if they clean your window or do anything for you, give them 5, 10, 20 pesos, something as a token of appreciation for helping you out. Now let's talk about ATM scams. There's quite a few ways you can get scammed when using an ATM. And one of those isn't per se a scam, but it is a tourist trap and it's a total ripoff. Some ATMs will offer you their exchange rate and you always want to press decline. And this might be difficult for you if you don't speak Spanish because the ATM is probably going to be in Spanish and it will say, do you accept the ATM's US dollar to peso conversion ratio of blank, whatever their shitty conversion ratio is. And you need to press that big red button. That does not mean it's going to decline the transaction, but it is declining that conversion rate. And by doing that, you're saving yourself somewhere between five and 10% most likely on the crappy conversion rate that they're gonna give you. This next one unfortunately happened to us, or I should say almost happened to us at the ATM just last week. We were pulling out some cash and they mm -hmm. didn't actually spit out all of the 6,000 pesos that we were with drawing. There was something like, what, 2,500? Yeah, so I'm like, oh, wait, wait, there's there's cash here. You can barely mm -hmm. see it. So I lifted the black thing back up and then I was able to pull like, out the rest of the out. cash. So yeah, we don't know if that's a faulty machine or if it's because someone tampered with it and put tape there, but that is one that we've heard about happening a uh -huh. lot. Um, another one at the ATM you want to watch out for is someone hanging around there. Uh -huh. Like anyone who's just there, kind of in the general vicinity of the ATM, even if it's like within a bank or something, if someone's just hanging out, like they're very likely up to no good. And there are many scams where you are kind of, they're, they're sort of the spotter looking for someone who's taking out money and then they'll let their accomplice know to do something to distract you or to just outright rob you or something. Or, or maybe they have a card skimmer on the ATM and they're trying to get your pin and that's why mm -hmm. they're hanging out so close to it. There's a lot of scams that revolve around people hanging out near the ATM. Uh huh. And there's not really much you can do because if someone's just hanging out, like you can't just assume because uh, some people are just hanging out. They just happen to yeah. be by the ATM or whatever. But in this case, I think whenever I've seen like a group of people kind of just there or hanging out by a car right by the ATM or something, it's like, let's just wait to get cash out later, or not not do it at all, find another ATM. Yeah, or if you're alone, wait until there's uh -huh, both of us are together yeah. and we have a little bit well, more protection in numbers. An, that's another thing too. I won't go to the ATM without Jordan. Even if there's no one there, especially if there's no one there actually, like <laughs> if there's no one around, I want someone like watching my back. Another ATM scam is if anyone offers you help, like, oh, do you need help because it's in another language? Oh yeah, translate it for you. There's a 99% <laughs> chance they're up to no good. Uh -huh. So decline their help. Okay, more about ATMs. This next one is not exactly a scam per se, but just something to be aware of. They sometimes have this thing like, do you want to donate to this charity or do you want to round up and then donate that money? This is also something that will happen at grocery stores. Like this happened to me, we were checking out at Shadrawi and the lady was just asking question after question after question. And we we're just like, si, 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 gracias. I was just thinking, like, do I run, do I want a receipt? Yes. Do we want like put it in a bag? Yes. Whatever. Like, okay, let's just <laughs> speed this along. But she was really asking, you want to round up for charity? It was probably like a peso or fifty centavos or something. Not a huge deal, but like also one of those things that I would have liked to be willingly making the decision and understanding it as opposed to just kind of like going along because I didn't really get the whole interaction. Yeah, there's a famous quote, and this is. Wise wisdom, I think. Wise wisdom. Wise wisdom. <laughs> a fool and his money are soon parted. Ahem, are you calling me a fool? <laughs> fool? <laughs> <laughs> I said a fool and his money. I'm obviously not talking about oh, you. Obviously, he's talking about himself. <laughs> <laughs> the second to last thing on the topic of ATMs is that we recommend never using a standalone ATM. You'll often see these like just out on the street or like sometimes outside of little shops or something, but they're usually not branded by any type of bank. They're just like ATM. Always avoid those because they're much more likely to be tampered with. They typically have less security cameras and just security and maintenance on them. So those are the type that are more likely likely to have some tape stuck under it or a card cloner that's just looking to swipe your card details. So try to find one that's inside of a grocery store, inside of a bank, inside uh, of an airport, airport even. Yeah, those are all great options. The last story we want to tell you on the topic of ATMs or ATM related scams is this lady in Puerto Vallarta had gone into the bank. So she didn't go to the ATM. She went into the bank. She withdrew a large amount of money 
and then got in her car, drove away, and like two blocks down the road got a flat tire. So what happened here? Well, there was likely a spotter or an inside man at the bank saying, hey, this person just withdrew a lot of money, put nails behind their tires, or put something to puncture their tires, put a knife in it or whatever. Then they get out a couple blocks away from the bank where they're in a more vulnerable situation, and then some friendly stranger comes and offers help. Oh, yeah, I have a friend who owns a tire shop. Sure, I'll help you. And then they robbed her. They robbed her of all the money she just withdrew from the bank, which is a very sizable amount. Just generally realizing that you have a lot of cash on you, if anybody possibly knows about that, I'd be suspicious of someone. I mean, like, what are the chances that you immediately get a flat tire and then someone's trying to help you? My, my guard would probably go up. And, and it's not to say that there aren't kind Mexicans that are willing to help out because they're I can, all over the place. I can totally see that same situation happening and it actually be so, being someone who has a friend that owns a tire shop and can tow your car there, whatever. But with the cash involved, that was like, and oh my gosh, adding insult to injury. Now you have a flat tire and no money, like, sucks. Mm -hmm. So the next category of scams we'll be talking about is driving, all things related to being on the road in Mexico. The first scam is one that we recently learned about from a Facebook group related to Mexico, and that was about a sticker being placed on the car. This person was like, we have two car fulls of people and we got, we were stopped and someone was asking for donations and they didn't give them any, but after they left, they realized that there was a sticker on one of their cars and not the other. So they were like, what, what the heck is going on here? Yeah, because neither car gave a donation. So it couldn't be indicating that one gave a don donation and the other didn't. Uh huh. Or that they saw how much money was in the wallet or something like that. But what people thought was actually happening, a scam that is out there, is that the car where the sticker is placed on it indicates up ahead to other people that there's something like a purse or a phone or a wallet easily accessible. So if someone else will stop them and you roll down the window, they can easily grab that and run. And this wasn't a big sticker, just like a small pink stick pink sticker about the mm -hmm. size of your fingernail. In our experience, unless it's absolutely necessary to roll down your window for someone, we don't. And even if we do, like if it's for a police officer, federales, or like military at a checkpoint, um, that's a, a time that I think it's safe, but otherwise we'll just roll it down a little bit just enough so that we can communicate with them. This next scam was something that happened to us when we were traveling in San Blas, Nayarit. We were given the clearance to park outside of the Airbnb we were staying at, but a traffic cop came up and took our back license plate off. Usually they'll take your front license plate and that's often how other police or officials know that you have some type of driving or parking infraction, but he was taking our one and only back license plate because in Arizona you only need one. And so we rushed out there seeing what the heck was going Going on and he basically was telling us that there that we weren't allowed to park there even though there weren't signs wasn't a yellow curb or anything and if we wanted to get our license plate back we had to pay this ticket that he was writing and we were pretty insistent that we we're not going to pay him directly like where do we go to pay this and because we were being so insistent about that he eventually decided like okay well you know what just move the car and don't you know, don't park here again, and he gave us a license plate back. This scam is not necessarily unique to Mexico, although we have heard of it happening here, and that's that you get in the car, you notice out of your rear view mirror that your view is obstructed because there's something there, cardboard, piece of paper, whatever. So you get out of the car to go take that off, and then someone who is hoping that you would do that jumps in your car and steals it, or they go in your car and grab your purse, your wallet, your phone, or whatever. Hop on a motorbike and then they're out. Yeah, of and then they're gone forever. So thankfully this is never happened to us, but I've heard of this happening in the US and Mexico. When it comes to driving in Mexico, the most common scam that you hear about is crooked cops asking for a bribe or what's called mordida, mordida, mordida. <laughs> But it's a little bit more complicated than that. And we will say that in two years of driving all throughout Mexico, we've been pulled over dozens upon dozens of times for likely not having a front plate because it's not required in Arizona. We have never to this point paid a bribe. Nor have we been asked for a bribe, but that's not to say it won't happen. 
No, so we're gonna tell you about some of the most common ways that you can be scammed while driving. So if a person gets pulled over and the officer asks for a bribe, it is almost always because they were doing something wrong, like speeding or they are missing that front license plate and they have a ticket or they are doing something incorrect or they don't have their correct temporary vehicle import permit paperwork. Uh huh. And then there's times where they get pulled over and they didn't do anything wrong and the cop lies and says they ran a stop sign or something like that. With these crooked cops, from all the stories we've heard, this almost happens exclusively in Mexico City and in the Riviera Maya. So in Mexico City, we've heard many stories about the circulation days, and that's basically where certain cars are only allowed to drive on certain days with paperwork that you have to have. If you don't have this, they're gonna say, pay me this fine and then I'll let you go or we'll tow your car and then you're gonna have to take a taxi to pay it and yada, yada, yada. But what happens when you are following the rules and you get pulled over and the officer is still trying to weasel some money out of you? Well, we had an example in our Facebook group and Lisa answered this. The other day on our way to Puerto Morelos from Playa del Carmen, we were pulled over. He said we ran a stoplight, which was untrue. He said it would be a 4,500 peso ticket. We told him we were leaving the next day and would not be able to go pay it. We told him that we didn't have that. Luckily, we only had 120 pesos on us. We told him this and he was clearly upset but made sure we weren't recording him. Asked us to put the money on the ticket so it was hidden and hand it back to him. Once we did, he tore up the ticket. We later learned in comments with her that she pulled out her phone and took a picture of the ticket hoping to get the officer's badge number or name and that's what made him nervous and willing to accept the 120 pesos instead of 4,500 that he really wanted. So we're not actually sure what to do in a situation like this where you know you're in the right and you didn't do anything to break the law or anything except my first thought now is like immediately pull out the phone like pull out the phone and start recording the interaction or perhaps try to call another officer like call the police and get someone else there. I think what I would do I would pull out my phone, I would start a Facebook Live video, I would tell him I'm recording him and that I know he's been trying to scam me and I would make sure the recording device is out of his reach because I've heard of cops taking people's phones that they're recording with and throwing it on the ground and stomping the phone. You know, as, as like crazy as this whole thing is, like how juicy would that be you guys if we start a Facebook Live video and like we're not talking to you but you just see that like something is going down. I hope we never, I hope we never have to do that but that really would be so juicy <laughs> yeah. and, and also I think it would make them be like okay like this isn't just between me and them anymore like now other people are involved so. they, and they, they don't want you recording if mm. if they got recorded like asking for a bribe they're probably gonna lose their job if that gets out there mm -hmm. but yeah let us know like what is the best course of action what's the best thing to do in a situation like this when you know you're in the right and they're still trying to push it so these next two have to do with rental cars first is police officers know exactly what rental cars look like and so some crooked cops are going to specifically look for and target those because they have tourists and travelers who very likely don't know all the laws and don't know their rights so they'll put you in a situation where even perhaps you're on the way to the airport, mm -hmm. you're trying to get to your flight on time and they know this, so they'll pull you over and try to extort a bribe out of you just so that you can be out of there and on your way and be able to leave the country. Yeah, I've heard of them specifically looking for rental car returns on the airport road. Yeah, and if you're planning on renting a car, I'd say go in some Facebook groups like ours, make memories in Mexico with Tangerine Travels and ask this, like, what do I need to look out for? What should I be doing and not doing to avoid getting in that type of a situation. The other one to do with rental cars is that some companies, well, and by the way, this can happen anywhere in the world, but since we're talking about Mexico, it can also happen here. This is where you bring the rental car back after you're all done and they say, oh, there's this damage here and you caused this. Unless you took pictures and video of the car beforehand or have documented it and signed off, mm -hmm. then they can actually say you caused this and you don't have any recourse with them. Yeah, I, I would have thought and known to take pictures pictures and videos of the car when I got it, mm -hmm. but there, someone shared an example of they claimed they, it was driven on low tires uh -huh. so and there was damage they, caused from that. Mm -hmm. If you're picking up a rental car, take the extra 15 minutes and make record a thorough video of the whole thing. Take uh -huh. pictures of absolutely anything that looks potentially like it's damaged or scratched or scuffed or whatever. So then when you go back, you'll have all the timestamps on all those pictures and or videos and you can say, nope, nice try. Look what I got. Proof. 
evidence. Suck it. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> this is yet another one that we don't have personal experience with, but we have heard these stories. And although we've been to many, many driving checkpoints. Which at first were super intimidating because you pull up and there's like tons of armed guys, like military guys or federal police or whatever with like machine guns and stuff. And it's like this whole thing, but those are nothing to worry about at least in our experience. Yeah, so. the, the, <laughs> after hundreds of checkpoints, the worst thing that has happened to us is we had to pull over to the side and they asked us questions for about 10 minutes. Yeah, like the same questions over and over. It was just more annoying than anything I've heard <laughs> uh -huh. about that until right now. This next scam has to do with people posing as something that they're not, acting like they are police officers or military, or maybe they're just claiming they are, but they're in plain clothes or they don't have a uniform. We've heard tons of stories like this. Thankfully, we've never actually experienced this ourselves. I heard one story where it was just outside of the border and uh, people created a barricade and said, hey, we need to see your declaration sheet for everything you're bringing in the country. And they, they were searching everything and, and all this and they asked for a bribe. They said, we're not going to let you leave here unless you give us a bribe because there wasn't a stamp on the paper, which you need that stamp basically saying that they were approved to bring all that stuff in. Another one, there were these two guys claiming that they were with Aduana, which is Mexico the... Mexico Customs. Yeah, Mexico Customs said, we need to see your vehicle temporary import permit, which is what gives you the legal right to drive your car in Mexico, your foreign car. So he did that, and they were like, ah, oh, you know what, we need to see your credit card to verify that you are the one that purchased the import permit. And at that point, it was like, who are you guys exactly? Like, show me your identification. And it all seemed very scary. He ended up getting the paperwork back, thankfully, not giving them the credit card and driving off and nothing happened. So to me, it seems like if you ever get in a situation like this where you feel like something's not quite right, maybe call the police if you can to either verify that they are who they say they are or get a police police involved in this. It is common, like when you stop at these military checkpoints or police checkpoints, they will ask for your temporary import permit. They want to see your identification. But I mean, when it comes to those people who are claiming to be something, but don't actually have the uniform or the ID or the badge number or whatever, comment below, what would you do? What should you do in this, in this type of situation? If you love Mexico and want to watch some more videos about it, about living in this country and traveling around, we recommend checking out our binge watch everything playlist, which is going to be on the end screen here in just a few moments where we've made over 250 videos about Mexico and we're going to continue making them. So consider subscribing to our channel to see other videos that we will put out about Mexico and our life here. <laughs> but one more very important thing, we have to gong the bell. We have to gong the bell! <laughs> <laughs> and gong that bell if you want to be the very first to be notified anytime we release a new video. And we'll see you soon.